rendering in the video sequence editor is slow, you can use Alt F12 with Power Sequencer to auto-render to YouTube using a video preset. The sequencer only uses one CPU core to render your videos. That's the reason why it renders so slowly and why playback is also so slow. In the new version of the add-on, we created a script called Blender Power Sequencer. It's a package, actually, that will allow you to render much faster with the video sequence editor. You can render with any number of cores. This tool existed before, like some other people created scripts, but they are not completely multi-platform, they have some bugs, they are not super maintained. So this one is our answer to all of that. Big thanks to Razvan, who rewrote the code entirely in a modular fashion. And that's it, let's see how it works. So here I am in the command line in my power sequencer directory. I'm going to dive into the script subfolder and BPS render folder package. So if I go to my file browser, here is power sequencer, the add-on that you can find if you've installed in your blender directory or something. You can dive in scripts, BPS render, and the module we're going to call is here. The entire BPS render Python program is in the subfolder. Note that you can use it outside of the add-on. And for now, you have to use it outside of the add-on. But I mean, you can also install BPS render as a standalone package. You can install it from pip, but you'll also find it as a standalone repository. So if you are an add-on developer, you can download the add-on, you can use it as a sub-module in your own VSC add-on without having to copy manually from Power Sequencer. So that way anyone can use it in their workflow. From there, we are going to call the BPS render module. So if I type ls to list the files and directories in here, I have my BPS render folder that I have to call from Python. But in order to do that, I have to type Python, or if you are on Linux on Bash, you will have to use Python 3 dash M to call the module BPS render. You want to type the module's name. Okay, so when you do that, you will get the list of options that you need in order to use BPS render. It needs a path to your blend file, and that's all it needs to render the video directly. It will use the render settings in your Blender file. In my case, I've already used Alt F12 to set to the YouTube render setting. The output is set to the name of the scene, in my case, and the video and audio encoding are both set for YouTube. Now back to the command line, I'm gonna enter the path to the blend file. So that's the required argument to render the file. It can be a relative path, but here I'm using the full path. And then you have a few options. I'm gonna show you the long names. So you have dash dash video only to only render the video without the audio. You also have mix down or mix down only to render the audio mix down. And you should have it's dash J, I think it's dash dash join only, or you can just type join and it will take the audio and video files that you have rendered and join them together. So if at some point you make a change to the audio or you want to replace the audio in the video, you want to process the audio externally, you can do that with these options and then join them with the dash J option. You also have an option called dry run, as you can see above. This one is used for debugging purposes. It will not do anything, like it won't create any file or render anything. It will just print all the commands that the program will try to call. So if you ever have a bug with Power Sequencer, please run it with dry run and send us the full result that it gives you. We have one last option, dash W, workers. And after this, you're going to input a number that corresponds to the number of threads or cores your CPU has. So by default, the program is smart enough to kind of detect that. But for example, on my computer, I have a dual core Intel processor with four logical processors. So I can run four threads in parallel, but I only have two cores. In this case, the program will detect two cores, so it will try to use two instances of Blender to render the video, but I can use up to four. So I can manually type dash W, and typically I'll use three 
so that it takes a lot of CPU power, but at the same time, I have one thread left to browse the internet, to keep writing, to keep working while Blender renders in the background. Say you have a Ryzen CPU with 16 cores and 32 threads. If you don't use any option, the program will use 16 instances of Blender and you can add dash W, something like 28 or 30 to use 30 threads and just have two left to do your usual activities on your computer. One or two threads are enough to keep working with Blender, to keep modeling a little bit and also this can render very quickly. Note that every instance of Blender will take some memory. So you have to be sure that you have enough RAM for the program to run. If you use dash W3, something like that, it's going to take one gigabyte of memory. We're going to test that. I'm going to press enter and start rendering. So first it looks at the settings in Blender, then renders the mix down. Then it starts the processes and renders multiple processes in parallel. It gives you the estimated finish time, the current render time, number of frames and frames per second. Now looking at the task manager, you can see that every instance takes over 300 megabytes of memory. So it's nothing more than what your web browser takes, for example. The only thing is, if you have many cores on your CPU, 30 instances of Blender would take 10 times that, so 10 gigabytes of RAM. I have 16 gigabytes here, so it wouldn't be a problem. It's very common on computers nowadays, but just note that because it can hit your computer a little hard. So now, what can you expect from the add-on? Well, the speed will increase with every core. It won't increase exactly linearly. There's a bit of overhead with rendering the mix down at the moment. Things like these, there are tiny optimizations that can be made. So if you want to contribute that, you're welcome. Like rendering the mix down in parallel with the video. If you render with four workers, you can expect the render to be roughly three times faster. Most of the time, it will vary. If you use 10 cores, I would say roughly eight times faster. And if you have something like 16 core CPU, at 30 render instances, you can expect it to be 20 times faster, something along those lines. So to install it globally, if you have pip install, so if you have Python with the package manager install, you can run pip install bps render, and you'll have access to it globally. Then you can just type bps render anytime, pass the file you want to render. In this case, this is the power sequencer update video, three workers, enter, and there you go. You can use it anywhere from the command line. BPS Render gets updates for one. It's already been updated three times, even before it was added to Power Sequencer. And you can find it on the PyPy archive. So you can download it standalone, make it accessible globally from the command line. That's actually what I use on my computer. So with pip install BPS Render. We want you and we need you to test it. So please report bugs on the issues on GitLab. Make sure that if anything is not working, run with dash dash dry run like that. It will print a lot of text and you want to select and send us all of that, please. This will help us get the bug fixed faster. And we need people to test this before we integrate it into Blender, into Power Sequencer. Um, but that said, if you want to help us integrate it, create an operator for it, it's very much welcome. That said, please get Power Sequencer, leave a star on GitHub, subscribe to the channel for more updates, for more open source content. And um, yeah, be creative, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.